Hi everyone, welcome to Engineering Physics 131 Online Labs. Today we're going to give you an introduction to the Collisions Colon Ramp Experiment, which is experiment number nine in the NPHYS 131 sequence. Uh, for this lab, what you're going to need to do is to use Logger Pro to complete an analysis of a video that's been downloaded from eClass. Uh, you'll go ahead and answer the questions on the worksheet in the lab manual that's also available on eClass. For this assignment, we ask that you complete questions 1 through 14 in the manual. You can skip the extra questions that are posted online. You can do the physics analysis on your own paper. You don't need to copy the questions over or anything. Go ahead and work it like a problem set like you would any other class in engineering. Go ahead and take images of your work like you would for a CrowdMark assignment. Combine them with your data table, that's important, into a single legible PDF file and upload that file into eClass. We're going to go ahead and mark it just like we would an assignment that comes in any other way. We recognize that you're out there and you might need some help, so we're going to give you special academic integrity guidelines for this uh, assignment. Go ahead and work with other students. I assume you'll be working remotely with each other, but go ahead and consult with your peers about how if you are stuck on a problem. However, if you do that, you must give acknowledgement to everyone who helps you out in a part of your assignment labeled acknowledgements. This must be present in your lab assignment uh, or else we will just go ahead and take a straight 20% off the maximum possible mark. If you didn't work with anyone, good for you. You can go ahead and just write acknowledgments colon none, but you need to make an explicit acknowledgement of all the help you received. We just want to make sure we know who is working with whom as we go through the assignment. So for the objectives of the lab today, we're going to basically analyze a video of a ball rolling down a ramp and explore two-dimensional motion of the ball before and after a collision. We're looking at the conservation laws um, and how they manifest from the energy and momentum of the ball. Uh, the theory of this follows uh, conservation laws in physics. Uh, we looked at conservation of energy with the swinging pendulum. Here we're going to explore the conservation of momentum combined with those uh, uh, the conservation of energy. Uh, these conservation quantities emerge from the properties of the system. In this case, we'll be getting our linear momentum. Uh, conservation because the, co uh, the physics is invariant under translation. So we can look at it from different uh, positions or reference frames, uh, inertial reference frames, and we will get the same uh, physics out. And so that is going to tell us that the linear momentum in the system is conserved. So basically, we will take a video of a ball rolling down a ramp since you're getting to enjoy the fine uh, wonders of engineering uh, remotely, uh, what you're going to do is take use the videos that we provide online. Uh, we will include two collisions in our analysis uh, and use that in your video. And we'll do that analysis in Logger Pro. Let's take a moment and refresh how to do that. The next thing that you will need to do is to import your movie into Logger Pro and carry out a video analysis. To do this, navigate to the Insert menu, go down to Movie, go through your file system to find the movie you just downloaded, and open it into Logger Pro. Open up the Video Analysis Toolkit by clicking at the bottom of the video. That will give you the options at the side. Go through the movie until the collision starts to happen. And analyze every data point from where the ball leaves the ramp through one collision. You do this by selecting individual data points and going through each frame, finding the ball before and after each collision. Once this is done, don't forget to set the scale. All videos have a helpful meter stick in them. It may help you to remember that a meter stick is one meter long. Once you do this, this will convert all of your data into individual points. X's and Y's are recorded. All right, so now that you have your data into 
uh, the Logger Pro, you can get, you will get an X and a Y velocity values. Go ahead and delete those X and Y velocity columns. We won't need them. Uh, the reason is that Logger Pro does some smoothing to the velocity curves to make them inaccurate for sharp changes in the direction of motion. Uh, so we don't need to use the velocity components there. Remember that when you have your assignment turned in, make sure you are uploading your data to the E-Class. So combine it with your files and include that in your submission. Uh, we will, as ever, take off marks if you do not provide the data you used in the experiment. Uh, so this will give you an analysis like this. Note that in uh, the unwound case, we will go ahead and delete these two columns. Blah and blah, goodbye. And then we have a x and y, x in red, y in blue, as a function of time here. And so even though the video shows the ball moving from right to left, uh, as we move forward in time, it's moving from left to right, like a standard graph. Uh, each of these points is a single separated frame in the movie, and we will use those to complete our analysis. So here, what we'll do is we have our velocity calculations. Uh, this is questions one through six. We will need to calculate velocity, and we'll use the same method that we used in experiment seven for nonlinear motion. Namely, we will use to points before and after a uh, given point to estimate what the velocity is. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue consider uh, the point before and after in position, the point before and after in time, and that'll give us a good estimate of the velocity at a given point. So you can carry out that analysis in Excel uh, to make it easier. Uh, we can also calculate the magnitude of the velocity vectors by con uh, con computing the velocity components individually using the difference formulas and then summing them in quadrature, which is the fancy way of saying square root of vx squared plus vy squared. And then we go ahead and we'll get a magnitude of the velocity vector out. That'll give you what you need to calculate the first six questions in the lab report. So remember magnitude and components are going to be separate. One important note when we're looking at these collisions is that the points where the data are actually showing the collision, that's going to happen between the frames. And so we have a case here where this is the ball after the collision and this is the ball before the collision in terms of the vertical direction. So what we need to do is calculate this uh, using points that don't involve the collision. So the closest point you're going to be able to estimate the velocity for in this analysis after the collision is the second point after the collision. You're going to use the point before and the point after and turn your difference formula to get the velocity of the point here. This is why we can't use the E-class velocity estimates. Questions seven through nine deal with energy. You already have velocity and you have distances from your movie, but you will need to go ahead and assume that the mass of the ball is 28.7 grams. We are not considering uncertainties in this lab, so you can take that as a given. From there, you can figure out the kinetic and potential energies using your high school physics 30, physics 20 formulas uh, to analyze this situation. Questions 10 through 14 also involve the mass, but we will have to calculate the momentum. Recalling that momentum is a vector quantity here, and so we need to calculate the components of the momentum and the change in momentum, or impulse, J, given the vector quantities and masses as assumed. Again, assume that the mass of the ball is 28.7 grams. Finally, one of the questions will go ahead and ask you to calculate the angle of the ball with respect to the floor. Here we mean the angle measured between the horizontal and the direction of the velocity vector after the collision. So it's this angle here, theta. That's question 13 on your worksheet. 
So the final things to remember in your submission to receive full credit, you must include an acknowledgments section. If you did not have any acknowledgments, go ahead and write acknowledgments colon none. You must do your own video analysis in this work. So there's no sharing of raw data, just like every other experiment uh, in physics. We'd like for you to collect and analyze your data on your own. Here, the collection of the data was the video. The analysis of the data includes your own video analysis. Finally, include your own data table as an appendix in your submission so we can check your numbers against the calculation values you compute. If you have any questions, go ahead and email your TA and they will help you out uh, through the work 